Medicine and, and Health Sciences. We are really excited that you guys were able to join this afternoon. And we want to show you all the different things that go into the application. So that way you're able to log in, start your application and go through as easily as possible and then show you all the different tricks and everything. So that way you don't get stuck. Your application doesn't get delayed or anything like that. We want to make sure your application stands out and we want to make sure the committee sees everything in your application. So right now, you guys all should be seeing the homepage for our website. Our application is completely online. You don't need to print anything out. You don't need to have any paper copies of anything. Everything is done digitally. That way it's easier for you and it allows us to easily send your file to the committee. Once you get onto the website, you'll see right away that there's a banner there that there's still time for September 2022. So if anybody on here is looking to apply for the upcoming fall semester, which is in about a month, you still have time. And we're really quick in getting these applications processed. So definitely start the application now. And again, I'll show you everything that you need to know about the application, but you can still apply for the fall as well as all the 2023 terms, January, May, and September. So definitely start that application if you want to, if you want to start your medical education as soon as possible. Once you're on the application, you should get this pop-up that you're seeing here now, apply now. So you can always go in and just click that. If not, you'll see in the top corner here, there's an apply now button as well. So you can go directly there and we're gonna go from the beginning. So if you already started an application, you put the email that you entered originally, otherwise put the email that you're using for the application. Here's one big tip. If you're gonna use an email, we definitely recommend using your personal email instead of your school email. Because eventually you're gonna stop using your school email, we wanna make sure that you're always getting notifications from us about your application and even afterwards about updates about the program, updates about what we're doing, things like that. It's all gonna to go to that same email. So we definitely recommend using that personal email. So you always have access and you're always up to date on what we're doing. So once you enter that email, you're going to come to this page here. Um, again, if you already have, if you already started the application, just put your username and password. But we're going to go right from the beginning. So create an account. And then you're going to fill out your general information here. Your first name. If you want to put or have a middle name, you put it there. Last name. So last name's a big one. A lot of the applicants that we get at UMHS have multiple last names. Make sure you put your full legal last name. What shows up on your IDs, what shows up on your transcripts, we need your full last name. So don't just put what you go by, make sure that full last name is there. You could also put a display name. So this is how it's going to show to us. Uh, normally people leave it blank, so you really don't have to worry about it, but the first and last name are really important, obviously. Put your email address down. Again, this is where we are going to communicate with you throughout the entire process. We want to make sure you're updated, you know when we're moving your file through, and that way we can quickly get you a decision. So put that email address that you check often, because this is what we're going to use to contact you. Confirm your email address. And then your phone number. We we do contact you. We do call you uh, to make sure everything is okay. Everything is going. If we see that there's a delay, we want to reach out to you. Uh, my team will reach out to you to make sure that you everything's okay. And if you're stuck on something, they'll walk you through it. And just like we're on a stream here, we can set up a Zoom account we can set up a Zoom meeting with you and we can walk you through and show the screen so you guys can see exactly how to do it if you are stuck on a certain page. So you throw your phone number, you can agree to these terms and then create your username and password. And then confirm it. It's pretty straightforward when you're here, you're gonna to agree to the terms, definitely go through it. And then you'll create your account. Hit continue. So this is where everybody is gonna to go to first. And this definitely has people get held up a little bit, 
And this is mostly because this is just how the uh, application is set up. Um, but it's a really simple, really simple way to get through. So once you go to the, to start a program, you can go here and pick whichever term you're looking to go. Again, we can still take your fall 2022 application. So if that's what you're looking for, definitely apply for the fall semester if you have all the requirements. Hit continue. And then you're going to come to this page where it says add programs. Our application defaults to rolling 2022. This is just something inside the system. It doesn't mean that you're only applying for 2022. If you're looking to apply for 2023, definitely continue with this. All you have to do is just add the program here on the side, regardless of what term you're applying. And I'm going to show you where you're going to actually enter what semester you're applying for. It's that first section that you just saw where the drop down and then there's another section uh, in the in, at the end of the application. That's what we really go by. So once you hit that add button on the side for rolling 2022, hit continue. You're going to come to this page. It's going to say total fee zero. Now I'm going to say this a couple of times throughout the application because you're going to keep seeing zero for certain parts. There is a $75 application fee. Anybody that's on this live stream has a fee waiver and you should have been emailed that fee waiver in your email. So you can use that fee waiver and I'll show you where to enter that. Otherwise, you do have to make a $75 application fee. Keep in mind, if you're looking to apply for September 2022, that fee waiver uh, deadline is for midnight on or 1159 on Sunday. So you want to apply as soon as possible over the weekend, especially if you're going for September 2022. Once you get to this, you just pretty much hit continue to my application. Now, this is your application. Everything is really straightforward. You have four different quadrants, four different sections of where you're going to upload all of your information and enter all of your information. We are going to go step by step through the whole thing because I want to show you exactly what each piece of information means and also to make sure you know to enter the information there. Let's start with personal information. And you can just go tab by tab here and you'll see how to save it after each one. But you want to make sure you go through every single section and read all the directions on here. So the release statement, these are technical statements certifying that all of the uh, information that you're entering is truthful. Um, everything that you entered is yours. You're also acknowledging how our process works. And simply all you're going to do is type in your name. Once you read everything, type in your name, hit save and continue. Every single section has this save and continue button. And if it doesn't come up, that means there's something that needs to be addressed in that section. It won't come up blue until you've done everything. So that's a good way for you to know if you've missed something. Save and continue. Continue to the next section. Let's say you don't do this. You can click through here as well. So you can jump around, but you obviously want to go through each section. So your name is pre-populated. You don't have to worry about that. You're going to go through each question. If you have an alternate name, meaning you had a previous name on your transcripts or anything like that, um, you want to hit yes and put that name so we know it's you. But again, always try to stick with your full legal name. That is the best way where no delays happen and no confusion happens if it's your documents or not your documents. Your gender, you can answer that date of birth, the citizenship is really important, especially when you're talking about the bursar department and the financial aid department. They also need this information, and they're getting this information from here. So you want to put your citizenship, and again, make sure you enter uh, this is the birth information. We'll get to the citizenship information, but this is also really important because we want to know where everyone's from as well. Put the state. And even if you're international, definitely fill this out. We have everything populated in here. Once you put your state, or, or wherever you are from, this will pre-populate to just address from where you're from. So you don't have to go searching either. Again, it's really easy and formulated so you can just breeze through a lot of these sections because they're pretty straightforward. 
save and continue, continue to the next section, contact info. So here you're gonna put all of your contact info. Again, this is how we can reach out to you. This is where we'll send your letters. This is where we'll send a lot of the information. Citizenship status. So this is what I was talking about before. This is really important for the other departments, especially. Um, that way we know where you are. These are, the th these are the different options that you have in here. So this is what most of you would put in. And then you would put the country, which is going to be the U.S. If you have dual citizenship, this is where you can enter it. Um, if you don't, just simply hit no. And then depending on what you put for country of citizenship, that's what's going to come up uh, to acknowledge what state you're from. Again, the really it's really important to add both of these because it'll help us in the future once you're accepted to the program. And you see how easy this is. It automatically moves you um, from section to section. This isn't required. Um, this is just for inf informational purposes for us. And everything's really quick. It doesn't take too much time. And make sure while we're going through this live stream, you guys are asking questions. We're going to stop and answer any questions that come through. Um, we're going to, we'll definitely answer the questions toward the end as well uh, to try to get anything that we might have missed. But definitely ask questions throughout. We want to make sure you have all the answers to your application. Uh, the quicker and the quicker and more efficient way you and you put your application in, the quicker you're going to get a decision from us. No delays or anything like that. You're just going to get your decision. So, and we want to get you a decision as quickly as possible. This bottom section here, make sure you answer this truthfully. It is really important, um, especially the last three sections here. If we do find out for whatever reason that one of these wasn't truthful, that is a reason to um, close your file and not accept you to the program. Even if we find out after the fact that something is lying, we can definitely stop your acceptance. Um, so you want to answer this truthfully. We'll go over whatever the reasons are and see if we can move forward. Next section. And this is the last section here. This is a really important section because we want to know how you heard about UMHS, especially if you heard about it from an alumni or a current student. Um, that we do have referral credits for that if you have heard from a current student. So that's, this section is really important. And it also allows us to know how students are hearing about us. So that way we can kind of use that to get, get to more students as well. So you put in, if you did hear from a current student, you're just going to hit yes. And then you put the student's name in there. And you'll see all the different options there are. And even if you heard from a current student, but first found it through something else, you can still put, I found it through Google, but it was also a current student that um, referred you to it. Articulation agreement. UMHS has a bunch of articulation agreements with a few different schools around the country. This allows you uh, to move to the interview stage. This also gives you a fee waiver. Uh, depending on the school that you're from. So we want to know that you came from one of the schools we have an articulation agreement with. And once you hit yes, you'll be able to write the school name um, here. So this is one we know we have one we get a lot of students from. And we'll get this information on our end and we'll make sure that everything that's supposed to happen happens. But it's also good to know that you came from it. If you didn't, the box won't pop up. Save and continue. So we finished this entire section. Let's go back to the dashboard here. So this is really important to know. Personal information, every single section was filled out. It was filled out correctly. So the box is green. These green boxes will let you know if you finished a section, as well as if you still have anything in the full application or not. So personal information, that's completely finished. Let's go to supporting materials. Recommendation letters. So recommendation letters are all done through the system. You don't have to have your recommenders email us anything. They don't have to snail mail us anything. Everything is done through here and it's really simple. You don't have to do much on your end. 
And your recommender doesn't have to do much on their end either. They don't have to create an account anymore. They can log in as a guest and upload their letter that they've written for you. So everything, again, is directly through the application. And why that's important is because when the committee is looking at your file, if something is manually added, they might not see it. And we want to make sure that they see everything and as long as everything is uploaded to the correct spot. So that's why we do everything through the application, everything online, because we don't want anything that you've done, all of your accomplishments, all of your good grades, your high scores, your recommendation letters, we don't want anything missed. So you'll see here, if you have any questions, you can email me here. Um, you'll find our, our mine and my team's uh, emails on the website as well, so you can always contact us. Remember, for letters of recommendation, you need a minimum of two letters of recommendation, one of them being from a science lecture professor. Uh, it's really important to have that science letter. We want to know how you do academically. And then the second one can be another uh, academic letter, or it can be a professional letter. But it's really important to have the minimum, minimum of two. So we just got a question in. Uh, what information is required and what can be submitted later in order to submit? That's an awesome question. So we are on the recommendation page. So you can put your recommendation requests. It doesn't mean that your recommender has to submit the letter in order for you to submit your application. Uh, the next section, um, we're going to go through a couple sections uh, that will show you what is required or can you upload that later on? Because some sections you can't upload until later on. So we'll definitely go through that. That's an awesome question to go through. Recommendation is one of them. You can always go back and add recommenders uh, if you think of somebody else or if the person that you put in isn't able to do it and you need to add somebody else, you're always able to do that as well. So this is one of those sections. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to put their information in. So if you're requesting a committee letter, you can hit yes and then enter the information for uh, where your committee letter is sent from. They'll get an email and they'll be able to upload that committee letter. If you're sending individual letters, just hit no. And then you do the same thing. Put the individual person in there and simply just put their first name, their last name, a way to contact them. The due date is really a reminder for them and for you. So that way they get reminders that we're waiting on this app, uh, recommendation letter uh, to move forward with your application. And it also reminds you that way you can follow up with them if that's what we're waiting on to move to the next step. So don't feel like if they don't meet this deadline that your application doesn't go through or anything like that. It's nothing like that. This is more of a reminder. This can also be updated. So a good rule of thumb, uh, at the most, I would put for a week. You could put a couple days, you could put whatever, uh, but a week is a good rule of thumb where the recommender will be able to get it in by next week, especially if you're toward the end of the week. If you want to write something to your recommender, like thank you or anything like that, that's where you would put here. The waiver. So this is so if you want to see the recommendation or no, we definitely recommend putting no. It definitely helps in the authenticity of the letter uh, when we're getting it. This is the permission to contact. So we want to be able to reach out to the recommenders in case something doesn't go through or if we have any questions. And then permission for schools, same thing. You do need to put a personal message. So otherwise you saw that if I didn't put a personal message, save this recommendation request doesn't come through. So you can't move on to the next section. So you just simply put something in there, save this recommendation request. So I'm only gonna put in one now, but remember we need a minimum of two recommendation letters. It's really, really important. So that section is complete. Next, personal statement. We require, everybody needs to write a personal statement. It's a 5,000 character limit for your personal statement. We want you to try to keep it in that 5,000 character limit. Um, it's, it's not necessarily concise, but it's concise enough where you're able to answer the questions that you're seeing on the screen. Why are you considering be becoming a doctor? 
uh, what do you think the biggest challenges are of going into medical education and why have you chosen us at UMHS? So as long as you answer those three questions and anything else that you want to add in there in that 5,000 character limit, that's great. You don't need to make this crazy long because you're also going to be scheduled for an interview. That's where you're going to go into detail about why you're looking to pursue becoming a doctor and why you're looking to choose UMHS. Then you can go as long as you'd like. Uh, this should be within that 5,000. And again, during your interview, you can expand upon it. So this is pretty straightforward. And if you have this written somewhere, or if you feel more comfortable writing it in a Word document or notepad, something like that, that way you can edit it and go through it. And you can do that throughout. And then once you're ready with it, you can copy and paste it here. So it doesn't mean that you just have to write it right here. You can work on it. So this can be one of the last things that you finish because you're still going through your personal statement. Always make sure you're going to hit. I'm going to go through a lot of them, but make sure you're always hitting save and continue. Because if it doesn't save, if you just skip to the next section, it won't save that section. And then your application won't be submitted and it'll just be in progress in our system. And then you're going to get delayed. The document section. This is another section where you can go back and add different documents after you have submitted the application, mainly the MCAT. Um, students who are applying to us, and let's say you haven't taken the MCAT yet, uh, you can put the day it's planned, but then the score is going to come later. So you're going to upload that document later on, but it won't keep you from submitting the application. So resume, this is required for everyone, and just have everything saved in one spot. And so you go choose file, go down to where your resume is, somewhere. I might have, there it is, right? Simple as that, upload the document. Your resume is there. MCAT score, same thing, choose file. Find the MCAT. Now I'm gonna show you something with the MCAT. So the MCAT's uploaded. This is a sample copy of what we're looking for. So sometimes students send us the MCAT and it's cut off where we don't see your name, the exam date, we don't see the ID to verify. Um, we, we need this full report here. So you'll see here, this is the full report. We need the profile, we need the percentages, everything. Need to make sure we see your name on there. All of this information needs to be on the uh, screenshot that you're sending us or the PDF copy that you're sending us. The other thing with the MCAT, you'll see here, we have two more spots. We need all of your attempts. So if you're not able to put all of your MCAT PDFs onto one document, upload them separately. But we need all of your MCAT attempts, not just your uh, latest one, not just your highest score. All of the attempts are needed. And why that's also important, it's not that your low score is going to hinder you from getting in. Sometimes that could even help you, where if your first exam was really low, and then we see a really good improvement to your second or third attempt, that is something that during the interview, you can explain that I realized this, and this is what I did to fix myself. And that definitely comes across as strong during the interview and to the admissions committee. So don't leave anything out. We do need all of your MCAT scores, not just for that reason, but also it's an accreditation reason. So it's something that is required. All attempts need to be uploaded. There's another section where you're going to answer these questions as well. I'm going to show you that. If you're a transfer applicant, this is where you're going to enter your comp exams. And you're, if you've taken the USMLE, you upload the document here. Um, and it's pretty straightforward, similar to everything else. So we uploaded the resume and the MCAT. That section's done. You'll see the check mark, the green, all good. So we finished the document section. Hit my application. Supporting information is now uh, is now green. So you know this section is done. If you're a transfer, so we just got a question for transfers. If you're a transfer applicant, uh, please email admissions at umhs dot admissions at umhs dash sk dot net and email all of your transcripts, your previous medical school transcript, and any comp and or step one scores. Email it to that address first. Don't start an application. We will let you know if you can move forward, and we'll let you know very quickly. And just like with everyone else, 
we will get through, we will process if you are able to apply if we do allow you to apply we will get through that application quickly so if you are looking to go for september you still have time even if you're a transfer applicant but first definitely email admissions at umhs-sk.net that's the first thing you want to do and you want to do that immediately and then we'll move forward from there as quickly as possible okay so we finished supporting information academic history so this is a big section this is where all of your transcripts of course this is where you're going to enter all the schools that you entered uh, we need all of your undergraduate schools. If you took one or two classes at a community college or a junior college, anything like that, we need those transcripts, graduate school transcripts. If you're a medical school transfer or if you're uh, if you finished a different professional degree, like a pharmacy degree or a PA program or a vet program, and you're looking to switch into MD, we need those uh, schools as well. So every single school that you went to we need that transcript. Even if it shows on your primary transcript, we need the original transcript of where the classes were taken. Uh, and you can enter as many as you need. So I'm gonna show you real quick how to do it. You go into here, what college did you attend? So I'm gonna put where I have, Rutgers. There you go, it pops up, you click on it. There you go. Did you obtain a degree? So if this is your primary school, you're gonna hit yes, degree awarded. If you're still in school, but you plan on getting the degree before you start uh, your program with UMHS, you're going to hit degree in process and then enter uh, all the information here. But let's just say here, I did earn a degree. For the most part, you're going to find bio, biochemistry, biomedical engineering. Uh, let's go with biochemistry because it's the first one there. When did you get the degree? So when your degree was conferred, uh, you you'll see it on your transcript. You can always contact your school, uh, whatever the case may be. Your major, if you had a minor, we wanna know that you took a minor. It All the information helps. If you were a double major, you can put that in there. What system is it on? Again, it's all really straightforward. You know this about your school, so this shouldn't take you too much time. If your degree is in process, are you still attending the university? Yes. If you graduated, you hit no, and then you enter when you went. So fall, we're just gonna do this really quick. Not that far. And then you finish, most people finish in May. Makes sense, four, there you go. See, you enter all the information and then you just hit save right there. Now, again, like I said, if we need, we need all of your schools, not if, we need all of the schools that you attended. So you want to add all of them. So I'm going to put another one in there. Bam. So it goes right there. Now, I let's say I just took one class in here. And it's the same thing. You just enter this information when you started. Trust me, this is all not real. We're just putting it in. And if you only took one class, obviously it's going to be the same year, but you'll see on your unofficial transcripts, you can get the information there. If you don't remember, if it was a while back, all the information will be with the documents that you have. So again, it's really straightforward to put it in here. You quickly hit save. So now your schools are in here. Let's say I went to just these two schools. Your schools are in here. And this is where your, your official transcripts are gonna go. Now there's two different ways where you can get your official transcripts. You're gonna click the order button. The first way, we have an agreement with Parchment. So you can go here and then you just hit visit Parchment and it's gonna go to their site and just follow these three simple steps. This number here, this is your unique number. This is your number for this school on this application. So this makes it really easy for our processing center to automatically put it to your file because they have that unique number. This isn't to the other school. This is only to, as in this example, Rutgers. So that, that information is really important and you can just hit copy here. Now, if your school doesn't do an electronic transcript, 
you can order it to be mailed snail mail. So here, this is where all of our transcripts go. It's important to, again, use that unique ID because then the team and the processing center will know exactly once they scan it where to go. This is our processing center is in Watertown, Massachusetts. So this is where all of our transcripts that are paper mailed, this is where they go. And this is what that document will look like. So you'll see here, the information's here in case you need the address, if you have to give it to your registrar's office or anything like that. It can't be marked student copy. These need to be official directly from the registrar and they'll know exactly what to do. And you'll see up here, this is that barcode and the unique ID that they're getting. Each school that you enter has its own unique ID. So make sure you're looking when you're sending to the registrar so that way they're getting the proper school and there's no confusion when you're when your uh, documents get to our processing center. And so again, each school has this form and this will definitely help the registrar's department at your school as well as our processing center. So that's how you order those transcripts. Again, this is another one. Your transcripts, your official transcripts don't need to be sent in in order for you to submit the application. The schools just need to be entered. That's the important part because you can upload unofficial transcripts and we're going to do that section in a second. So once you entered all of your schools, standardized tests. So we require two different spots for the MCAT and it's more to capture the information. Also, if you took the other exams, you can enter it here, but obviously the majority of everyone applying to UMHS, the MCAT is what they're adding. So you hit add test score. Have you taken the test? Let's say yes. You put whatever date. You put your ID. And this is going to be on top of your score report. So here we go, your ID is in, and then you're gonna put the details. So again, it's important to have that score report if you've taken the exam of what you've done. So let's just use this one as an example. And then put the total. That's it, it's as simple as that. Your, your AAMC ID, when you took the test, the details of each section and your total score. And it's really important that this gets filled out because we won't move your application forward until we have every single MCAT scores attempt. So once you save it, you're good to go. It's in there. Again, if you've taken the IE LTS, put that score in. If you've taken a TOEFL, put that score in. If you've taken multiple MCATs, add another standardized test, which one you've taken, and then you go through the same thing again. Right, so we'll just put another. And then just put the scores in again. There you go, save test. Everything is really easy. Everything is straightforward. Just make sure you read the instructions and fill everything out. And you can always look to the side to see if you filled everything out. So both sections are complete. You're going to go back to my application. So we just got a score about the MCAT. And since we just finished with that section, we'll answer that real quick. We don't have a minimum score that is required. Uh, on average, you're looking at between a 485 and 490. But again, those are just averages. That's not a requirement. We look at every single part of your application. Everything that we're going, we're going through right now, all the documents that we're entering right now, everything comes into consideration. Recommendation letters, transcripts, MCAT scores, resume, um, everything. Everything in there, your personal statement, how your interview goes, everything is considered. Uh, as part of the decision of if you are going to be accepted or not. Um, so definitely apply, talk to your advisor um, if you're unsure, if you think you might need a little help, or if you just want to talk to somebody. We have Ms. Corey Thayer, we have Mr. Earl Mayner, myself, Ms. Melanie Weiner. Depending on what where you're from, reach out to one of us, and we're all on that admissions page on the contact information. You can get all of our numbers, set up a Zoom meeting. We can go through 
the application. We can go through the program. So definitely let us know if you have questions about where your scores are, where your GPA is at, anything like that. Definitely reach out to us. We want to help you. We want to guide you every step of the way to make sure that you're comfortable with UMHS and then you go through the application with as much ease as possible. Because again, the quicker and the easier it is for you to get the application in, the quicker and easier it is for us to process and get you a decision. We won't wait. We get applications in all the time and we get decisions all the time. So definitely reach out to us if you have any questions. The final section. This is a really big section as well. There's a lot of questions in here we need you to answer. Program materials. Once you hit program materials, you're going to get this blue box up here, doctor of medicine. You're simply just going to click on it right here. This is really good information to know. Um, obviously, if you're applying to UMHS, you probably have, have gotten all this information, attended a webinar, talked to one of the advisors, went through the website. But it's also really good to just uh, refresh and kind of go through all the different things that we offer, the different programs that you can be accepted into, what we require. So this is important especially as you're applying, make sure you have these requirements. General Chem 1 and 2, General Bio 1 and 2, Organic Chemistry 1 and 2, Physics 1, all of those courses with a lab component, two semesters of English, Calculus, or Statistics. So make sure you have all that. U.S. citizens and permanent residents, we definitely, we absolutely need your MCAT scores. And again, we need all of your MCAT attempts. That is really important to emphasize because that will delay your application getting processed. These are all the documents, everything really we've went through. It's all listed here as well. It's listed on our website under the admissions process section of the admissions tab. So all the information is everywhere. And again, you can always reach out to us. Our interviews right now, they're conducted uh, via Zoom, uh, Zoom or Skype, depending on who you're interviewing with. Uh, we're starting to kind of get back where if you're in the region, we can do in person. Uh, but it depends on where you're from and it depends on the schedule. But we're always able to conduct the interview literally within the next day. So once you get to that stage, don't hesitate to contact who your interviewer is. And we'll set that interview up as soon as possible, depending on both schedules of the interviewer and yourself. The three start terms that we have, again, we're still taking applications for the fall. If you're looking to apply for September 2022, apply today. It's really important to have as much time as possible if you're accepted to make all the arrangements to get down to the campus. Again, disregard the start year and term. This is a default that we have, but this information is really important. Once you've gone through this, questions. So we need all of these questions answered. I know we have a couple transfers on uh, the live. So for you, you want to make sure you answer these questions here. This is where you're gonna go. Did you attend a previous medical school? Yes. Simply just read the instructions and fill it out. Where you went to school, the dates that you attended, uh, if you earned a degree, all of that information needs to go in here. This section here, if you were dismissed, or if you weren't dismissed, or if you were dismissed not for an academic reason, don't feel like answering this question is going to stop your application. It's just some information that we need uh, to know and not being truthful will only hurt you going through the application process to the point where we won't move forward with the application. So if you were academically dismissed, you would answer that. If it's a non-academic dismissal, we do want an explanation. Or if you weren't dismissed and you're just looking to transfer, again, everything is pretty straightforward. Have you taken the comp exam? Yes. Same thing, date and scores, all attempts. Everything that you've taken, we need all attempts. So make sure you remember that, especially if you're a transfer student for the comp exam. So if you have, yes, if you haven't, if you're coming right from undergrad or graduate program, you hit no. Same thing with USMLE, have you taken it? Yes or no, if you hit yes, date and scores. If you haven't, that's it. This is where you're gonna put where you're applying to. This is the answer that we use to process the application. Now, this doesn't mean you're locked into this application. If you start the application and realize you don't finish your classes until November, obviously you can't start this September, but we can easily roll you into January. But this is what we're gonna go by when you initially submit an application. So what semester are you applying to? 
med one. If you're coming directly from undergrad or graduate, you're going into med one. If you're a transfer and you put in any of the other ones, we understand that's what you're looking for, but it doesn't necessarily mean that's what you're gonna get. It's gonna be up to the admissions committee and our registrar's office based on your previous school trans previous med school transcripts and your performance there. And then here you'll see, these are the applications that we're taking right now, September, 2022. Again, still available, so definitely apply. If you're applying for next year, you don't have to wait a full year. You don't have to wait for next fall unless you're finishing school after May 2023. If you're finishing this December, you can apply for January. If you're finishing uh, sometime in this uh, winter of next year, you can apply for May. There's no need to wait a full year while you're going, when you're applying to UMHS. We're rolling. We're always taking applications. We're going to soon start taking 2024 applications as well. So just keep just keep updated. Again, contact us if you're not sure if your application is ready yet or not. If you're for 2024, everybody on this live stream has gotten an application code. So you have your fee waiver. This is where you're going to enter it. Again, it expires Sunday. So apply this weekend, apply today, apply tomorrow, apply Sunday after you've gone out, but apply before the deadline's up because that fee waiver is really important and it's a benefit to you. Um, and then we can, and then we also know that you attended the live stream as well. That is a benefit. If you've attended a webinar, if you attended a live stream, if you've attended something else, we want that information because it lets us know your interest in UMHS as well. So we know you all are on this live stream because of the code that you entered. And that just shows that you're interested and you wanted to learn more. So I talked about the zero balance. It's gonna say zero balance because our application is housed on a different site. Uh, it doesn't, it's not directly on this. So you're gonna acknowledge that you know that there's a $75 application fee. Again, this only applies to you if you don't apply this weekend. If you apply this weekend, you don't have to do anything except for acknowledging the statement. So once you acknowledge that, you're gonna go down here. And again, you're gonna sign that you acknowledge it. And then the link is right here. And it's also gonna be in the emails that you get from my team a link on how to pay the application fee if you didn't. Uh, but the link is right there and it's straightforward and you go through, uh, pay the $75. But again, if you're on here, apply before the weekend's over and you don't have to worry about that section. So once you do that, you're gonna hit save. Everything was saved successfully. Pretty sure I did everything. And again, make sure you're looking for this red star. We need every section with a red star filled out. Documents. So this is how we move forward with your application, even without the uh, official transcripts. If you have an unofficial transcript, this is just like the documents that you entered before with your resume and your MCAT. You can go right here, add document, and just, again, have it all saved to one section of your application. You put it in there upload document right there it's uploaded again all the schools that you attended need to be to that college's attended section and then all of the unofficial transcripts if you haven't done the official transcripts already need to be sent so that way we can move forward so now i've sent um i put both of the transcripts in here this automatically goes to your file it automatically saves, so you'll see there the question mark. Uh, this is okay. This is good to go, and then you can go back to my application. So you'll see here, program materials isn't complete. So you think you went through everything, but something obviously was missed because otherwise this would be green. So simply, you just go back in here, and you see why it hasn't been. This is why. So I put yes, but then didn't acknowledge where I went to school. Now, if you didn't go to a previous medical school, just hit no. Put the term, put your code, acknowledge, and then you'll see the save button is now blue. Everything was saved. This is green. So now all of the sections here are complete. Once you've done this, 
you can go to submit your application. If everything is complete, this little red one is gonna show up. And that's how you know you can submit the application. So this is also really important to know. Completing all four sections, having all four sections green, doesn't mean you've submitted your application. All that means is you've entered all of your information, but it hasn't come to us. It hasn't come to me or my team yet. And that's gonna that's a lot of the reasons why there's a holdup. People think they finished because they've submitted all the information, but they haven't submitted the application. So once you come in here, you're gonna get the little red one and you're gonna hit submit. Zero dollars, we've, we've already talked about that. There is a $75 application fee unless you apply this weekend with the fee that you with the free code that you've gotten and then it's zero and you just have to acknowledge it hit continue hit continue and this is just the final um thing keep in mind you want to make sure all the information is there now if you've taken your MCAT or if you're taking your MCAT, you're still allowed to go back in and edit that information and add that information. Same thing with recommendation letters. You can go back in and add it, but college is attended. You can't adjust afterwards. So if we see that you've attended somewhere else, we'll send you the instructions on how to get your application back. But again, that's just a hiccup. So that's why we want you to know, add every single school that you attended because that'll stop the delay in processing your application. Same thing with your MCAT, make sure all of the scores are entered. MCAT, you can go back and edit the scores without having it returned. So that's a little easier, but again, it'll just cause a delay that you don't want. So acknowledge that everything is there and then hit the blue continue. And then depending on your internet, it'll take this long or it'll be a lot quicker. Let's see if there's any questions while we wait for them. So there's a question on letters of recommendation because a lot of you have went through school during COVID and we understand that. And what you want to do is you want to reach out to your advisor. We're going to see, um, we're, we'll look at your file and we'll see what it is. It's really important to try to get a letter from a science professor, but reach out to one of us. And then we'll we'll go to we'll see what we can do to the next steps. I'm just seeing if there's any other questions. And this is obviously taking a long time. Oh, we got another question. So the interview format is um, it's normally via Zoom. So the interviewer, uh, whoever is assigned to you, the interviewer will reach out to schedule the interview. And then again, it's depending on both of your availabilities. Uh, we don't, we, there's only a few, there's only a certain amount of people that interview. So everyone isn't everywhere. Uh, if they're able to do it in person, great, but Zoom is a really good way to still be face to face uh, and you can schedule the application a lot quicker. So depending on where you're from, um, in the Midwest, everybody will be interviewed by Ms. Corey Thayer, who is the advisor for the Midwest. Um, if your advisor is Ms. Melanie Weiner, she will be the one interviewing you. Um, and then everywhere from everywhere else, um, you will be interviewed by either one of our professors, Dr. Herrick, or uh, one of our grads. And we have four grads right now that are doing interviews. And I think grad interviews are awesome as well because you get you can ask them questions as well. Uh, so that's pretty, and it's very informal. You want to be honest and you want to get all the information out in your interview because that's really the biggest information the admissions committee is going to get about who you are as a person. They'll see all your numbers. They'll see all of your, what you've done on your resume and everything like that, but they want to get to know who you are as well. And so your personal statement and your interview is really where they get to know that. When do I need to send my official transcripts? So we can give you a decision with your unofficial transcripts. If you're accepted, however, we need your official transcripts before you start. And my team will constantly be updating you and reminding you that we need these official transcripts. This is gonna cause a hold on your application if this isn't in before you start. So it's really important um, to get those official transcripts Okay, normally this is just going to go directly through. And once you go through this submit application section, 
it will automatically be sent to us. We get it immediately. The second you submit your application, me and my team, as long as it's during the day, me and my team will see it immediately and start processing it. Where we've had students who submitted their application at noon and they were ready for an interview by 2, 2.30 because everything was in. We were able to evaluate the transcripts. We were able to move forward. They made the application fee or they had the waiver. And then we had them assigned an interviewer right away. So it can be done as quickly as a couple hours. Um, we, we want to make sure that we get you a decision as soon as possible, meaning we want to get you set up for an interview as soon as possible. And once your interview comes back to us and we send it to the committee, you will get a decision normally within 24 to 48 hours. Uh, some files are a little trickier than others. That might take longer, but for the most part, between 24 and 48 hours, you will get a decision from us. And then if you're accepted, you can start preparing to come down to UMHS and get ready for your semester to start medical school. You can still start this September. We can still get you set up this September. If you submit your application literally in the next hour, you probably will move forward to a point, again, depending on what you submit, where we can at least assign you an interviewer and then you take it from there. So definitely apply if you're looking for September. We have a question, um, where do you get the fee waiver code? So anybody on the live um, will be getting the fee waiver code. If you haven't, reach out to us um, that you were on the live uh, and then we'll figure out how to get it to you. Um, again, you can submit, even if you don't put the fee waiver code on there because you didn't get it, you can still submit your application. We'll we'll make sure we get it to you and we'll make sure we enter it after the fact, but we'll get it to you before you start. We'll try to get it to you before you start the application. Don't worry about that. So that really is everything in the application. Those are the documents that we need. Those are how the documents should look. That's everything that you need to have ready in order to move forward to submit the application. You don't need your official transcripts. You don't need to go through AAMC to get an official score report. We just need that full score report. That looks like this. Use the download transcript request form. This makes it easy to get your official transcripts in. So like we talked about before, once you get your decision and you have your registrar's department from your schools working on this, you don't have to worry about anything. We'll update you that your official transcripts is in and then your admissions file is complete. Once your admissions file is complete, all you're worried about is getting ready to start your medical education, which is all you should be thinking about once you get a decision from us. That's what we want you to worry. That's what we want you to think about. So I want to thank everyone for joining the live stream. I hope you guys got a lot of good information. I hope uh, you guys are all going to apply either today or over the weekend before that code expires. And again, if you're looking for September 2022, apply now. There's still time. We can get you a decision. Don't put off starting your medical education. You can still start this year and get started in becoming a doctor. So again, thank you. Reach out to us with any